What's up, guys? Doc and Jock Podcast. This is Coach Joe. The other guy's Dr. Danny. And this is episode 100. Hey, gang. Coach Joe here to talk to you a little bit about Shoe Q. If you haven't listened to the show before, guys, you know I'm a weightlifter. I don't always run, but when I do, I run with my Shoe Qs in. Guys, Shoe Q, it's an insole with a heel plate built in. The heel plate has some ribs. Rib for her pleasure. Ew. And those ribs help turn the nerves in your feet back on and restore that feeling in your foot so you know when you're on your heels and what to do to get off of them quickly. The rib plate also encourages a midfoot strike, which properly utilizes and helps to rebuild the arch in your foot. And I'll tell you from personal experience, I don't always run. I do a lot more weightlifting, but I weightlift in my shoe cue insoles because if you follow i do a lot of heels off pulling and why am i doing my heels off pulling because i'm trying to promote more midfoot activation when i'm breaking that barbell off the floor i'm trying to be athletic guys if you know anything about foot anatomy all the goodies are in the front of the foot by the toesies and in the back is just that fat pad so wake up that fat pad get off your fat pad and figure out how to use that foot by using your shoe Q today. And while you're there, guys, head over to shoeq.com to learn more. Brian McKenzie with a great video. Also, guys, check out at shoeq on Instagram. And if you get fired enough to purchase the product, which you should, use discount code JOCK10, JOCK10, to get 10% off your shoe Q today. Let them know that Doc and Jock sent you. Let them know that Coach Joe said you can do more than just run in this shoe Q. And guys, I'm telling you, I use it personally. Love the product, and I think you will too. Cheers and best wishes for your midfoot happiness, guys. Take care. Can't believe it. We've done 100 of these shows. Really neat. Uh, fired up. A lot of great content we've provided. Um, a lot of cool people we've talked to. A lot of neat stuff that we've learned. And uh, man, we're just excited. I, I, Danny, I can't believe that we've done 100 of these. And that people really listen to him. Yeah, it's funny because um, I think I, it's, the funny part is I think our wives thought we had maybe ten in us. Yeah, that's right. And then it would fizzle out, and we proved it. We proved you guys wrong as you listen to this. <laughs> but uh, no, it's 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 been um, it's been fun, man. It's been cool. And a hundred that it's a lot. You know, looking back on it, I guess it doesn't really seem like um, that we've been doing this that long, but we have, and and. Um, you know, and I actually got up this morning and I, I kind of pulled some of our uh, stats off of the uh, the website and and looked at you know how many people we've you know been able to reach and and uh, not just here in the U.S. but it's crazy like the global reach that some of this information has and it's been cool to watch this but you know we've had uh, over two hundred thousand downloads in that time we've we've uh, we've, we've had a download in in like in seventy four countries in fact we had. We had. Um, I can't name seventy four countries. I can't That's either. Crazy too. I can't. <laughs> I, I counted them this morning, and uh, and even in in countries that you'd think, what the hell? Who's downloading it? Like Iraq. I mean, we had like uh, seven hundred downloads in Iraq uh, in you know the last however many months we've been doing this. So I'll, I'll tell you what's funny. I went on. You know, we can on our stat thing. We can look at the map. I went and looked at the downloads we get in China, and yeah. That you can see them regionally, which is cool. The map that whoever does the stats on that, really cool. Um, someone with the podcast websites group, I think it's Blur Bear. Whoever does their stats, it, it's unbelievable the what we can get. But to see the actual downloads where they come from, but there's one download that comes from China that scares me. Like there's a lot in China, but there's one in the very center of the country, yeah. the dead center. I know and I'm you're like, talking about. That's the government. I'm like, that's that's like a that's China really listening. It's really, <laughs> it's probably, or it's, yeah, some guy that lives on top of a mountain. I mean, there's there's I don't think there's too much there, but uh, yeah, it's 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 really it's interesting, you know. It's, if you look at the the reach, um, and 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 really, it's not just our podcast. Like this is this the information that that people are putting out on podcasts, blogs. I mean, this is where we yeah. are. It's a, it's all about information there's so much more of it and uh you know hopefully we're providing information that's useful and that that helps people you know live a live a better uh live a better life whatever that you know whatever that means to them but um you know we 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 definitely um have been kind of floored by 
the amount of uh, response that we've gotten from from the podcast and really in something that started as a kind of a drunken conversation that you know that led to a commitment for a year and that's what that's really what Joe and I did we said hey we'll do 50 podcasts we'll give ourselves we'll give ourselves 2 weeks where we can screw up and we'll try to do one every week for <laughs> like right. 50, we'll get 50 weeks is what we you know that's what we said yep. and and, uh, and you know, and we've doubled that at this point. So, um, yeah, it's it's been cool, man. And and, and not only that, but I mean, we've had 112 iTunes reviews, and and uh, there's so much positive feedback, and you know, uh, so many people that have reached out to us asking a question or or uh, you know just telling us something they'd like to learn about you know on the podcast, and uh, and only one and only one negative review, which is pretty 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 good. And and we still even appreciate the negative review, man. I mean, it's and he was he's kind of spot on a little bit. Uh, he, we are yeah, a little is. immature. <laughs> yes, that's that so, is a uh, that's very accurate, you know. And and if you think we're immature now, you should have met us when we first met ten years ago. You would have, right? You would have definitely thought that. That's right. We were uh, probably doing the wrong thing, uh, getting uh, thrown up in. Um, what was that story? You throwing up someone? We were at that little party at the the Thirsty Turtle in San Antonio, no. and at the end of the night, a buddy got slapped. Someone threw up in a wash machine. And, um, no, Pete you know, peed in the washing machine. Pete uh, peed in the washing machine. There you yeah. go. That's right. Okay. Well, good times, but we're we're living, we're learning, we're growing, and I think we wanted to take this this episode and kind of just walk down memory lane a little bit. So for folks who haven't listened to all the shows, maybe we'll hit on some interviews and topics that you haven't you didn't know we did, and you can go check them out, and that'd be cool. But um, we just want to kind of rehash the whole podcast process and what it's been like for us so far. So we're going to go over a few of the interviews, some of the topics, what we've learned, what we change, and then um, kind of discuss what we're looking forward to. Because as since we've grown, I think our thought and where we want to take this podcast has grown. So we want to share some of that with you guys at the end of this. So I'm excited to do this. So uh, so Danny. Let's let's talk about a few minutes and talk about our, our favorite topics we've done together because this show kind of started out as us kind of just going back and forth on best practices, you know, me strength coach wise and CrossFitting and you as a PT. But man, it kind of just us. We we thought we had something through the conversations we were having and the topics, and you know, that's the one thing I would say that I'm most surprised about is in the beginning of this, people were really interested in the shows that we were just doing back and forth. So what, what, what are some topics that you think have been um, important and fun and, and worthwhile doing? Well, I, looking back at, you know, some of the, the numbers of downloads, you know, on the episodes, I, I really enjoy the ones where we talk about how people can um, kind of tr- try to take a crack at themselves in terms of uh, an injury or avoiding an injury. Um, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of my bread and butter, and and uh, it's been it's been interesting to look at the the downloads because like we talk about lower back pain, for instance, right? So yep. what do you, you know what I think it's the lower back fix um, podcast, and and that was quite a while ago, but it's still to this day, you know, we'll get it gets a lot of people that are that download it because it's frankly a huge problem, and it's a frustrating problem, and I've I've had this issue, you've had this issue, you know, it's something that we would ideally never ever have another you know pretty nasty back injury um and i think a lot of people can hopefully take that information and um apply it to what they're doing in in training or you know their daily life and um you know and and not have pain or or be able to get back to training and get back to weightlifting and all the cool things we talk about Uh, but you know not having an injury and having uh not being able to pick your kids up out of the bathtub like that's that's a pretty cool thing to be able to help somebody in Sweden or wherever the hell somebody listened to that and did some of the stuff we did. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's so. Anyway, that's that's what I've really enjoyed, and I, I I I've enjoyed the response that we've gotten from people on that as well. Yeah, when we started doing the Friday shorts, it was cool because you know we've done a lot of interviews, but getting onto the Friday shorts kind of got at the heart of what we were trying to do in the beginning, where it was like, well, let's help folks out, and uh, the fixes episodes are awesome. Whether it's a squat fix, uh, the lower back fix. Um, your episode on the tactical lower back fix. But yeah, the lower back stuff is interesting, right? What are the stats? 80% of people are going to hurt their back training and and then 90% of those folks are going to re-injure it, right? I think it's yeah. something along those lines. Well, I think it's I think it's just I think it's 80% of people across the board in the US. It's uh Oh, not even training. It's no, just 80 it's, people. And and 80%. then the re-aggravation rate is like 90%. So, um and and now So doesn't that, it really it has to be 100 then. 
It's, I mean, ask ask ten of your friends if they've ever hurt their back, and, and yeah, there's different right. levels. There's different degrees at which you know, yeah. you know, you could have an injury, but um, it, it's but it it dramatically affects everything else, right? You know, your ability to train in many in many other ways. It's it um it it just stops you dead in your tracks, and and um, it sucks, man. Like, you know, I remember so Joe, Joe and I when we were at the World Weightlifting Championships out in Houston. We had both hurt our back, like re, like reaggravated our back. Not not terrible, but the funny thing was, Joe Joe hurt his back picking up one of Donnie Thompson's giant steel tubes at the compound in Columbia that weighed like 175 pounds, which is like a deficit deadlift to put it on somebody else's back. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I heard it in the I heard it the same way. I hurt my. This is so funny. Everyone can probably talk about this. I I. Uh, tore up my lower back in san antonio when i first got into crossfit i was deadlifting in a globo gym where you weren't allowed to deadlift yeah and i couldn't drop the weight so i was lowering it and the back gave out and yep. then fast forward at we're at the compound donnie's wor- rolling everybody through the tempering <laughs> and i'm over top of you and i you know i picked up the tube and i'm lowering it to your ass to kind of <laughs> roll your lower back through a tempering and it it was the same thing kind of tweaked out and i couldn't believe it and you know it's these awkward pickups these awkward descents that sometimes can yeah. get us and uh man don't hurt your back guys but you're going to do it so um but well, hopefully we'll be able to help you fix that down the line but well i appreciate you not dropping that giant cannon <laughs> on my back because i yeah. think weight as much as i did it literally weighs like 175 pounds. So uh, anyway, yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that um, you know that's been really cool to see. Hopefully, people can take something away from this and and uh, avoid an injury and, and maintain their training level and fitness level. And that's really the over the overall goal is you know be fit so you can enjoy things outside the gym as well. So I'll tell you two topics that I've enjoyed us talking about. Um, the first is um, it was a hot topic early on. Discussing my visectomy openly on the podcast, yeah. I think it's really important. It helped me get over the hump of you know having it done. For some reason, I've talked to some guys on the show, and they're surprised at how hard that hit me, giving away my superpower. But um, it did. But you know, discussing it with you know two hundred thousand people and in seventy four countries has been really helpful in helping me man up and get over it. But uh so thanks guys. Thanks for dealing with that early on, the visectomization of Joe Shamanic. Um it it it's done and it's over with. Thanks thanks for thanks for uh sounds like lending a bad ears. movie. I guess <laughs> <That's> uh, <laughs> it sounds you know there's actually a documentary I won't watch it. Um but it's on Netflix. It's it's on the set list, but I'm scared to watch it. It's called The Visectomist. Have you seen this? Uh, no, and, I've never looked that up. <laughs> ever. No, but it's new. But I've read the description, and supposedly, and, and anyone listening to the show, and listening to this, leave us a review and, and let us know if this movie's worth seeing or a comment somewhere. But this Visectomist movie, supposedly it's this guy who just traveled in the country. He's performing millions or hundreds of thousands of visectomies, and – He's just running around the country talking about the benefits of a visectomy. I guess there are some some benefits. So maybe I should watch that again. It'll help the whole thing come full circle. Well, how did you even look it up, man? Like, what did you search to see that? <laughs> no, it was just up in, like, the new releases. Oh, it it's was? Like, okay. I thought you were Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if you know how I t- – I think how Netflix does their reviews – if you look at it, the five stars that it gives, it's not necessarily that other people have given it five stars. It's what Netflix perceives that you'll give it. Oh. Which is interesting. interesting. Like, how do they know yeah. that? I don't know. So that's crazy. But, but uh, so, so I wouldn't say, not only is that a fun topic for me to get into in terms of like men's health issues and just kind of being, it's okay to be a guy. But um, it, it was fun for me to be able to get some of those thoughts off my chest. So, so I actually use this podcast as therapy to some degree. So, so thanks for that. But uh, I will tell you, the coolest topic was a topic that my wife actually begged us begged us to do for a long time. The the Prego episode I thought was really cool, yeah. really helpful, and not only one that I thought was informative for folks that I got some good feedback from, but also one that. Um, I learned from because we pulled in the your um the your new your new therapist your yeah. new helper or your yeah, manager with some great info so that was a fun one for us to do yeah I agree and you know and that's I've gotten I've gotten a lot of uh, good feedback from people just here in Atlanta that listen to our podcast that that uh, 
they listen to that one and and uh it, you know it's i think it's um it's a challenging time you know in in um that that uh person's life to where they know they're they're they don't know what to do and and my wife was kind of in this as well and i think that the people are, are one of two uh, camps like they're totally fine with training or they're like don't you know don't do anything and yeah. um so the information is very um it's very polarizing and it's, it's you know they, they definitely can get uh different opinions that don't match up so um yeah i think i think it based on the five kids that you know we have now uh Father. Accum- accumulated uh this, Maybe is, you know, this is what we've seen and and so yeah that podcast i think is very helpful and hopefully people uh, took some good information from that and and um, applied it. If you if you're pregnant or if your your uh, significant other is pregnant as well, you know, hopefully that helped you out. We were actually at like a joint baby shower last night, which was fun. So this this um, this chick out here is about to pop a baby, and we were playing cornhole, which is something that's come up on the show before. Love it. And I'll add one tip to this: pregnant women, you when you, if you're playing cornhole and you have the uh, the Dynamax ball growing in front of you, you can't throw around your belly. You have to shift your hips and keep your arm straight. This this chick, she was looping her arm around. She couldn't even hit the dang board. This girl, so you got to take like a bowling stance, guys, and the arm's got to be straight, nice fall through. You know, yeah. what, what did they say in the Patriot movie? Aim small, miss small, right? So That's good, yeah. We got her on the board by the end of the night. But um, we still kicked her ass. I don't care how pregnant she was. We we still had to beat her. We still had to kick her off the board. Yeah. But, uh, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> she um, learned something. Competition is competition. Uh, every everything's a competition. So, any small win you can get, whether it be beating a pregnant woman in cornhole or whatever it might be, <laughs> you take right. that. You take that win, and you right. you you, mem- you remember it. Fired up. Well, cool guys. Uh, cruise through the episode list. Look for the topics between Danny and I. Look for some stuff to come. The Friday shorts are a great place to hit hit some of those up. And um, we're looking forward to do more. And if you guys want to, uh, some of those topics, Danny, that we've done have come straight from iTunes reviews. So again, it's the yeah. best way to get your topic on the show, guys. We look at those reviews quite a bit. And again, we have 112 of them. So so thanks a lot. So moving on, interviews. Um, the, the interviews have been unbelievable. And when we were going over the set list and, and how many we've done and, and the level that we've been able to attract somehow leveraging every bit of who we know to get some of these folks <laughs> on the show. Right. Um, but it's been fun and, and we've learned a lot. And I'll tell you what's been – reaching out to some of these folks, it's not only interviewing them but being able to – hold on to some of those relationships even through skype you just have cool conversations with people and you just end up staying in touch i mean even to this day i put out a tricep um instagram post so so those of you who don't know it's my 10 year anniversary today which is cool but um i put out a little post about me doing some tricep work saying you know sometimes you got to lift just to keep it spicy in the bedroom and that's okay 10 years down the road me and the wife are we're still doing that but Rob Wilson sent me a, a, a direct message of a, if he was having a back and forth with me about triceps. So it's cool. And that's a guy who I have a neat little back and forth with that I would never have talked to had it not been for this podcast platform. So it's been really cool to not only interview people, but man, to really – with this kind of long format interview, you really you really get to know some folks. So that's been great. I agree. and And it's been – really fun to be able to delve into certain conversations and topics and and if i mean i would enjoy just talking to these people regardless um right. if even if we didn't you know record it and then put it out for the world to hear but um it it, it is turned into one of my favorite things to do and, and even though and and honestly i don't think people actually have Maybe maybe they don't understand how much actual time goes into to doing this, but it's a significant amount. I mean, that's right. It, it's quite a lot, and um, but it's enjoyable, and it's something that you know I, I look forward to standing in my closet and talking to you know <laughs> Joe and whoever else it might be on on a podcast because I know I'll, I'll typically and I say typically I would I, I have always taken something away from a podcast that uh, Joe and I have either talked about a subject or. Um, when we've talked talked to a guest, and in particular guests, I feel like I, I get these little nuggets of information, and, and not just our podcast, but just on a on from the standpoint of podcasts in general, and how much it's changed my um, 
my, kind of my learning style and and being able to take a little bit of you know some kind of like little nugget away from any podcast I listen to, whether it be training or personal development or business or whatever it might be. Um, it's such a valuable way to learn that I, I hope people do that with us as well. And and I I look back at are the people that we have talked to, and man, it was hard. I actually I just wrote down like fifteen people and little like bullet points from each one of them. And I was trying to think what, you know, what are my favorite ones is it's really, really hard. Um, it's hard to pick, you know, but, uh, and if I had to pick one, I would say, I would say my favorite one that we've done was the interview with Brian McKenzie. I think that okay. was, I, I just, I just thought that that was, there was some really, really valuable information in there. Not, not necessarily on training, but just on, uh, life, you know, and coming from somebody like Brian, who I know is, he's, uh, he's done a lot, you know, uh, in his life. And uh, I think what resonated most with me was, you know, when he says, you know, how <laughs> you spend all this time in the gym, but how happy are you? You know, yeah, that's right. And Great question. it's, it is a good question because think about how many people we see that are, that are training, you know, five, six days a week, they're spending, an hour and a half, two hours at, you know, at the gym at a time while they're there. And what maybe, you know, they're getting a lot of good training in and they have some relationships at the gym, but outside of that little bubble, man, are you, how, how's your home life? You know, how, how is, how is your life with your, your kids? How, you know, I, I see people all the time that ruin, you know, relationships training for a triathlon where they're, yeah. they're training their ass off and they neglect their spouse or their kids or, you know, other relationships with friends that they have. And, and, um, and that's really what matters. I mean, let's let's be honest. Like being fit, we're fit so that we can enjoy, we can enjoy our our relationships that that we value, whether it be friends or family. And, and I think that that podcast, in its own right, ha, has been one that resonated with me uh, more than all the rest of them that we've done. Yeah, it's funny. That's a great topic, and I think it's one that we've we've tried to get across on the show. And it's something that I know for a fact I bring up with every everybody I work with remotely, and everybody I try to program for, or Anyone who I give any bit of training advice to, I, I always like to give them that little nugget that if, you're, if your livelihood isn't affected by your training, then your training shouldn't affect your livelihood in that kind of negative fashion. So That's well it, said. That's perfect. Yeah. It, it needs to be – the training needs to be kind of the cherry on top. Sure, it should be hard, but man, is, is there an aspect of your training that's helping you make some deposits? You know, because there's so many – Again, we bring up podcasting and information and everything that's changing in the world, but there's so many opportunities to withdraw, whether it's work, life, and stress. Man, training to me should be something to, down the long run, should end up as a deposit. So, you know, Brian put that into great perspective. Um, ben Benson, I mean, when we brought Ben Benson on to talk about maybe how to go right. from regionals to the games, or, you know, we, our idea for that episode was to talk about, um, programming for CrossFit because yeah. he's done so well with it. And all of a sudden it's a conversation about man, how his life has changed since rock climbing and, and, and trying to do some different things. So man, check out those episodes. Um, great stuff. And I'll tell you my, my favorite episodes that I've done or we've done and I couldn't pick one. So what I had to do was, um, I was thinking about one person, but like the bizarro version of that person. And it was the Donnie Thompson and Jill Miller interviews. Yeah. Was, to me, what's interesting about those two folks is like, they're the same person, but they're the complete opposite. And what I mean by that is uh, yeah. Donnie is like this big, you know, right now he's on a weight loss mission. So check out Don, uh, super D's, uh, Instagram feed. He's eating right and dropping pounds. But, uh, Donnie's this giant power lifter who's teaching people how to relieve pain with giant metal objects, right? Well, Jill Miller is this cute little yogi who's teaching people how to relieve pain with pliable little tune-up balls. And, man, when you talk to them, they're engaging. They're like the same person but opposite. So those two interviews to me are ones that I will still go back to and listen to today because they're just so entertaining. And those two folks, along with being successful and great coaches and helping people, man, they're two of the most – genuine people yeah. and who just like you said Danny and what Brian was talking about who not only are successful but man talk about people who enjoy what they're doing right 
and are very generous with their time, you know, traveling the country. And I mean, to this day, I don't think Donnie charges people to come to the compound. I mean, when we went, I mean, he's, um, he does for his little clinics, but local people who train there, when I walked in, he didn't know me from, from Adam or anything. He's like, ah, you're local. You don't need to pay to train here. You just come by. And I was like, all right, man. And, and we, yeah. uh, we took him up on that. So great guys. So Donnie, Jill, thanks a lot. Great stuff. I'm actually looking at the, uh, treat while you train dvd that jill hooked us up with very early on too where she was our first interview i think she was she wasn't the she was uh not she wasn't the first one she was one of the first ones yeah i think jen jen was first but uh yeah she was she was one of the one of the first and it's funny you say that because i agree with with that approach and the, the other thing is that you know jill had um gotten into powerlifting a good bit which is also kind of you know makes it even more stronger parallel or a stronger parallel for what you're saying because uh you know she had she had uh, gotten so flexible and she had done yoga and she had stressed her body into such a, a hyper mobility that she started doing you know powerlifting to help build strength around these joints so Crazy. so not only yeah did she did she do you know these these self um kind of treatment techniques but now she's really in donnie's world and uh yeah it's it is funny man and donnie you know uh, looking back on that interview i wrote that one down as well he he's just very funny and he he tells the funniest lower back injury story that i've ever heard where he when he he um he blew his disc out and he had to crawl downstairs (laughs) while his bulldog was like staring at him put a weight belt on so that he can so he can tighten it down enough for him to get up right and turn a stove off. So he's got like something boiling over on the stove. And, you know, and I just imagine he's huge, right? I mean, he's like 400 pounds. That picture of you and I standing next to him, he's wider. He's wider than both of us put together. If we stood next to each yeah. other, like his shoulders yeah. and his just build is just wider than both of us. And, you know, it's, it's you know, he's just, just a big, funny guy and, and very smart. And I really enjoyed talking to him. Yeah, yeah, and uh, hopefully I was actually. You know, it's funny the um, over here at West Point, they're finally going to allow the PTs and Eliza Sports Men Fellowship access to the football team this year. And I was talking to the PT who's going to be working with them, and I was like, "Yo, we got to get Donnie up here to talk to these guys because he loves the military. He's he's a generous guy, and uh, we'll figure something out for you." So, Donnie, if you're listening, um, we're, we're we're trying to pave the way to get you up here to West Point. But yeah, great stuff. So. So other cool topic. I'll tell you um, other cool folks just to mention real quick. We uh, we're not gonna be able to hit hit them all, but man, I remember the Zach Evan Esh interview was one yeah. that I woke up early for, just yeah. pumped because he's been a guy that I've been following since Hawaii. He's another one super genuine, fired yeah. up, um, learning a ton of one that was beneficial to me in terms of um, getting my sleep together. Sleep's mm-hmm. been a big issue for me, so. Man, I would say a big thank you to Kirk Parsley, yep. Alice Brager, and even um, Don Fletcher, who, who's we've discussed some really important sleep stuff that I will tell you has impacted me personally so much. Where, man, you find out that for one, sleep's crucial. Two, you find out when you have three kids as young as mine are what real sleep deprivation is. And then honestly, how to manage it, it's not so difficult. It's really routine-based stuff. And it's just like anything else. If you want to get your back squat up and be healthy doing it, it's just going to take real work and thoughtful approach. And it's the same thing for sleep. you got to train those sleep muscles. So, um, man, great stuff, guys. Yeah, I've got – you know, I I wrote down quite a few. They overlap with you, but – I'm just going to, you know, I'll touch on each one of them just briefly, uh, just kind of name these people because it's the, these, you know, they're, we've learned a lot from these. And, and I would say yeah. one of my like favorite early ones was Chris Irwin. Talk, we're talk, we're talk <laughs> about, talk about an interesting person, right? So yeah. here's somebody that's, uh, you know, uh, prior Navy SEAL, now, you know, president of Kill Cliff, So businessman, father, he's got three kids. His wife is really cool. She's, she's an old patient of mine. Um, and a musician is at that, right? So like, uh, in a uh, wrote all the music for a documentary that got a, that got nominated for an Academy Award. Like it's uh, it, it, talking to him was was really a, a lot of fun. And then Jill Miller, we kind of already touched on that. Anthony Almada talking about you know what supplements you should actually kind of take and what works. And and uh, Anthony, and, uh, Anthony is, is one of those people that I feel like when we talked to him, I had I instantly realized how much smarter he was than me which is really <laughs> yeah. which is really cool to to talk to people that are just so much more 
uh, it, dialed in on a topic and, and have such a depth of uh, knowledge. And he's a good example of that. When it comes to supplementation and research around that, and, I mean, he's he is incredibly smart. I think Hunter McIntyre might have been one of the funnier conversations that we did. He's yep. hilarious. And some of the stuff he told us, like, off podcast, like we weren't even recording, you know, it's, it's some of the some of the funnier moments I've actually had um, over uh, a Skype interview. Uh, when we talked to Kelly and Juliet mm-hmm. um, on uh, about stand up kids, I thought that was a really important topic. And the hippo, it, she survived the hippo. Yeah, attack. when she tells her hippo story, because I'd never heard it. I'd heard mi- myths yep. of this hippo story of her being attacked by a hippo, and I've I've never actually heard her t- tell the story. And uh, that's a crazy story so if you haven't if you haven't heard that one go back and listen to the kelly and juliet one about stand-up kids um talking to diane foo is really cool you know because she talks about these cultural differences in weightlifting and i thought that was you know really interesting to kind of learn uh, more about kind of how the russians approach things and the and the, the more of an asian approach and and from somebody that kind of exposes herself to a lot of different things and tries things out on herself uh plus she said something in there that resonated well, a lot with us as well we we're talking about consistency not just about consistency with training, but just consistency with things that you do in life, right? And and yep. for us, and that's I, I took that, uh, and we I would say we directly apply that to the podcast as we consistently try to just you know, uh, in, we we say we're going to release podcasts on certain days, and, and that's what we do. And and uh, I, you know, we took that away from Diane, Diane Thompson. I wrote that down was my favorite ones. Dan Lear uh, with uh, caffeine and kilos. Uh, the the reason I wrote that one down is not to, not just the interview was was fun, but we did that one live at the World Weightlifting Championships. And, yeah, right uh, there, Vent Village. That's we right. Just, we just said. Uh, we we saw them. They said they would do the podcast, and we said, "Well, we'll be back in an hour with our laptop," and yeah. we did it. <laughs> yeah, and they, and they were great, man. Those guys are yeah. awesome. I I wish them the best. Their business is great. They've got some great products, and um, you know, I really really enjoy chatting with them. But having being able to do that at the World Weightlifting Championships was was a uh, was really um, really unique, and and I'm glad we had an opportunity to do that. And then Kirk Parsley, you know, talking about sleep, it, it's, mm. it, here's a guy that if you can get Navy Seals off of Ambien. Like we should probably listen to you, you know. I mean, yes. that's that's basically what I what I took away from that. Zach Evan Esh, I loved I loved the story where he talked about um, cutting the grass midday, wearing ankle weights so that he could you know uh, feel like a man and doing something hard. That's right. <laughs> I just I laughed so hard because I thought you know. I, I thought of my dad doing yard work for like six hours on the weekend in jean shorts, and just uh, how just how just tired he would be and it'd fall asleep. Jean, you know, were they jean shorts he bought or jean shorts he made? I think oh, that's, that's crucial. Bought. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not sure if it matters, but but definitely yeah. bought. Um, yeah, we talked Ben Benson and and uh, uh, Brian McKenzie, and but. One of my favorite moments was when you told us how you were conceived um, when we talked to Ben Smith, who, I just, yep. who who is probably one of the more conservative people we talked to, and uh, just laid it out there. And I don't think he had a good response for it. <laughs> I'm well, that was early in the show, and here's what's funny about that interview. It like, was the beginning kinda, of the show. <laughs> yeah, having met, ha- having had the opportunity to meet him, getting my re-upping my level one, I knew he was kind of a straight guy. So like, I went into that going, I'm gonna spite, I'm gonna get him going. And at the end, I remember even just asking him, stop, dude, you've had to have done something bad. Right. Your mom yeah. caught your hand in the cookie jar. And literally, he was like, um, no, I don't think so. I'm pretty <laughs> good. I was like, all right, man. Yep. And you know, to this day, I, um, uh, a, a client that I work with remotely actually was just in – she's from Arkansas, but she went out to the games and she met um, Ben Smith and she said the same thing. So – um, con- yeah. consistency matters in that regard. So I'll even tell you this, just to add a couple in terms of just my, something I've gotten really into over the few last, you know, four to five years has been weightlifting and the weightlifting folks that we've been able to touch base with, uh, Don McCauley, Glenn Pendelay, Cheryl Hayworth, yeah. um, the international perspective we've gained from, from Kirksman Teow was unbelievable. And then, um, my Polish brother from another mother, um, uh, Jacek, Coach Jacek and his um, Asian assistant, Eddie, interesting stuff, the weightlifting stuff, the people we've met. And like I said, you know, for a long time, I've kind of sought out mentorship from folks and not successfully in many cases. But man, with this podcast, once you have a platform where you're putting other folks' information out there, the the snowball just started getting huge and we've been able to really talk to some unbelievable folks and 
what it's kind of been like almost an accelerated uh, PhD of sorts where it's like this human optimization stuff that we've been able to gather from these folks. I, I'd imagine if the monetary value of what these folks might charge per hour, right? Yeah. If you do some private consulting would probably add up to large sums, right? Oh I mean, yeah, it's just... no, for sure. <laughs> so, oh, well, they're, they're smart, busy people. Thank you. Yeah. If I just right. want to talk to you about, Hey, how do I improve my deadlift? You know, Chris Duffin, let's, uh, yeah. You know, it, yeah, it would, yeah, it would, it would cost money, but and that's not, you know, it, not to say that we don't take, you know, certain things away personally as well, but uh, you know, we, we we try to try to ask things that we think are going to benefit a large group of people, and and yeah. and try to get their opinion on that, and uh, that that's been, yeah, that's been really cool. So, uh, you know, and it's funny you say we, you try to help people. I would tell you, I always make sure to get one question in that it's me like, yeah. that will. Every question – in every interview, there's a question in there that's my question for me. Um, but uh, So thank you guys for uh, for dealing with that. But uh, <laughs> I'm a little selfish in that regard. When there's some people I get on, I'm going to get my question in. You know, yeah, uh, Sorry, iTunes reviewer. But uh, uh, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, that. but uh, you know, it is what it is. But uh, it's been fun. So um, cool, man. If we missed you, um, it wasn't because we're trying to diss you. Um, it's right. just – sorry, sorry. It didn't um, – I'll say another one, you know, uh, the, the Jesse Itzler man, you know, yeah. he, talking about, talking about rapping, um, all these names are flooding back and, uh, well, when, okay, th- this man, <laughs> this man is a billionaire, like literally yeah, that's right. <laughs> a billionaire, uh, one of the owners of the Hawks and, uh, and yeah, we get to chat with him about, um, you know, uh, about the book that he came out with and, and, uh, you know, training and nutrition. And, yeah. and, and then I, you know, I even went out and did the polar bear plunge with him out in Lake Lanier. And that was, that was a blast, man. Uh, yeah. I got to hang out with him and DJ hurricane. And That's awesome. <laughs> who did not want to get in that water. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, it's cool. It's just, you know, it's just, it's fun. And, and, and the, I tell you, look, you know, like the, the, one of the big topics we want to talk about is what have, what have we learned from podcasting? And sure. What I've learned is it, you can you can see certain people that maybe you you like to follow their information or they they've been very accomplished in something very successful you know like uh let's take let's take jesse itzler for for instance right from a business standpoint this guy has done a lot of really impressive things and talking to him you know and actually getting to you know kind of meet him and, and hang out with him and stuff and he's just they're these are just regular people man they're regular people that uh are they're they're fascinated by something and they work really hard at being good at whatever that is and and not only that they don't give up on uh on things they're they're very very good at uh seeing things through and that's something that i've taken away from this is uh not to don't put people up on a pedestal you know what i mean like it's they're just regular people and this regular person had built literally a companies that were worth billions and he's no different from you and me you know he's just I mean, he he's, might have if anything a little bit more and this is something all of us can get i would say uh i don't even know if this is the word stick stick to itiveness they just stick at it they go they grind and they push and they push and they push and they don't stop you know yeah. even and it's and it's not hard stuff that they do i remember interviewing jesse and he was talking about his pie chart that you brought up and right. how he designates the percentage of his time and he was literally at the end of the interview saying oh yeah i'm working on my pie chart for tomorrow as well and he pulled it right up and yeah. he had and he was so these guys not only are they consistent in their approach and and, and their persistence but they do what they teach, right? And they're into what they teach. So that's the one thing all these guys, you know, whether it's Kirk Parsley, who was this Navy SEAL who cared about the community, but he didn't start out as a sleep expert. It no. was a problem he saw and he just kept grinding at it and then he became passionate about it and he stuck to it. So right. um, stick on it. So no, and I would say too, the big lesson that I've learned through this is the, con- and you brought it up with Diane, is that consistency does matter. We we wanted to do 50 episodes and not miss a show and i'll tell you what i'm not really good at a lot of stuff especially on this consistency approach but with this podcast we haven't missed a download in fact we've even started doing two a week and we've been doing that since whatever a few a few months now but we haven't missed one and yeah you know i think that's really mattered and it's something that as the downloads have increased 
I've always thought, well, somebody wants, somebody's looking for it on this particular day. So we need to get it out. Right. So that's been important. And I think it's really helped. So even that consistency has flowed into some other things in life. So consistency matters. And man, talking with these folks, you're exactly right. It's not any secret to success. It's really just grinding it out and having a plan and sticking to it. Absolutely. And, and it also seems to be finding something that you're passionate about. It's very, right. it's very hard to consistently work on something that you're that you don't really get enjoyment out of and you know and this is something that's i i had this conversation with a with a guy yesterday that he called me he's interested in going into the military as a physical therapist and and um he he's got like a year left in school but you know we we were talking about the military you know and one of the reasons that that I decided to get out. Now, one of the big reasons was Kelly offered me an opportunity to teach for Mobility Wide. But I also, I knew exactly what my role was going to be going forward. If you look, if, if you stay in the military and you're a, you're a physical therapist, once you hit a certain rank, you know what you're going to do. You're going to have to manage clinics. You're going to have to just be in this administrative role and go into a bunch of meetings to have like prep for another stupid meeting that you have to go to talk about whatever, you know, regulation of something that has just changed. And, and um, I, I just, you know, I, I did not really want to do that. I didn't like, I don't think anybody that I saw really liked it. In fact, it, it, they would talk about, well, hey, how many years do you have left? This is the question I would hear all the time. Hey, how many years do you have left before you can retire? And what, they were, and what I thought they were really saying was, hey, how many years do you have left before you can retire and then actually do what you really like? And, sure. and I thought, I thought to myself, man, I just, I can't do that, you know, and the people that we talk to on this podcast, they don't seem like they wait around for something. To do anything. For, no, not at all. They, they find something yeah. that fascinates them and they work on that. And that's what they, they, they become obsessed with it and they, they try to, you know, become the best they can at it. And that's very inspiring. So, you know, if, if you listen to this and some of these people, you may think, man, how did they get where they're at? Well, it's because they found something that they, they love doing and, and they just, they just grind it out, grind it out. I mean, like, look at somebody like, I mean, like somebody like Zach Evanesh is a perfect example. It's, it's, oh, yeah, that's right. Like, you know, it, it, you don't go to be a strength coach to make money. You know what I mean? Like that strength coaches predominantly, that's a don't lot of pay. hours and not a lot of pay, <laughs> you know? And it, and he just kept, you know, going and going and going and end up building a you know great online business for himself where, you know, he's, he's helping a lot of people around the world at this point. And, and he's also got a couple of gyms. So, you know, take that and, and think about it. Next time that you're sitting at your job that you don't like, uh, is that the right thing for you to do? I, you know, I don't know well, if it is. My my two takeaways from from that final point you made there are one, the Zach story is great because he was not making much money anyway because he was a PE teacher. Yeah, exactly. At a public school, right? So he he went from he went from no money to less money, and then he started making some again, right. just doing things the way, and he did it completely the way he wanted. Out of his, he was. He he wasn't even doing he didn't even have the CrossFit umbrella to fall back on. He had underground strength coach yeah. doing this thing. And he he was like, I'm gonna train wrestlers in my garage high school wrestlers in my garage. You know what's crazy about that? He must have been doing something right because how many how many kiddos, how many parents are gonna drop their kiddos off at some strange guy's garage to go train, right? And yeah, so, good question. So so good job, Zach. You're you're killing it and you're an inspiration to other folks. And I'll tell you the other thing, the army thing's interesting to me. Watching my wife kind of go through that. You know, even coming around promotion time, everyone's always worked up about certain things. The the army's interesting where they won't let people people can't just do the job they like. So for yeah. example, if you like to be in a certain group and you're making success with them, in three years' time, you're gonna get pulled away from that job you're really good at. And that's to me someone from the outside looking in, watching my wife manage that, hearing you talk about it and hearing a lot of people talk about it. Man, when you Sometimes, and I think Colin Cowherd said this on on the herd one time when I was listening to that. That happy is good enough sometimes, right? So, like, if you find a spot or a niche or something you'd like to do, you should keep yeah. doing it, right? So that's something that I've, watching people not or people fighting against that. There, man, with the internet, there's a way to pursue your passion. So you should just find what you like and do it. And um, yeah, uh, well, the podcast has really helped me realize that. That's a truth. Not only talking to people who've done it, but 
doing this podcast and it becoming relatively successful in, in terms of how I perceive it um, has proved to me at least that, man, just grind away at what you like doing. Yeah. And in, in the military, dude, you're dead on about that. Uh, like my favorite job I've ever had to this day, and I like what I do now a lot. But yeah. when I was at when I was at my brigade in Hawaii and, you know, I had free reign to do what I wanted to and get out and and work with a community that I really um, enjoyed being around, um, <clears throat> you know, doing a lot of training conditioning stuff with them having patient hours, being able to teach injury prevention protocol stuff, being able to get out. Go Hang to, out with Neil. Dude, I get to uh, – Neil's awesome. Neil Santiago is one of my favorite people ever, and, and he's one of the smarter strength coaches I've ever met in Hawaii. And, got you know, learning from Neil and, dude, going to the range. Who gets to go to the the freaking range and go shoot, you know, for their job? Like just – like go ruck march in the morning in a – you know, around – uh, Schofield Barracks in a on a tropical island in a in a mountain range. Like that was yeah. that was my life, man. I got to do that shit and he got paid for it. And I would have stayed in that job for as long as they would have kept me. I would have. I mean, if I could have stayed in the army for thirty years in that job, I would have done it because I loved yeah. it. And I, I was, you know, I was helping people and it was and it was great. But that's your, not the reality in, in the military. Yeah, you know, you have to you have to take jobs that have increasing responsibilities and as you go forward you know you know and make rank that's that's what happens you can't just stay there and i have the same problem with my friends that um get into special forces jobs you know they want us to trust me if they could stay there for their whole career they would do it I, I, why wouldn't they you know and and they can't and so yeah it's frustrating well and even looking forward to some interviews that we've done that we haven't posted yet um the tactical the tactical strength coach yeah What's pat mcnamara yeah pat, that that is going to be great that, i was <laughs> Oh my God, that was that was such a fun interview. We were openly. I was on vacation, and we started the interview off and told Pat, "Hey, it, it's uh, I'm 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 a six pack deep, Pat. You can join us on this." And he did, and it was a fun chat. So uh, right. look at that. I think you know you look at and he talked about how fun the special forces was to go into and how you're pretty much living the little boy's dream, right? And right. but then it's crazy to think that well, if they're good at it, why can't they keep at it? But um, interesting stuff. What's going on, gang? Coach Joe here to talk to you a little bit about Performa Sleep. Guys, Performa Sleep has worked with industry experts to develop the ideal mattress for athletes and active people looking to improve their performance through better sleep. Guys, Performa Sleep is proud to say that every single Performa Sleep mattress is made in the USA and ships quickly from their warehouse to your door and hopefully gets in your bedroom pretty quick. Guys, I sleep on a Performa Sleep mattress. I absolutely love it. It's the only mattress on the market with copper cool technology. And I can say right now as a guy who sleeps hot, who sleeps with sweats, I don't anymore in my Performa Sleep mattress. Check it out. Folks like myself, like Dr. Danny, Lauren Fisher, Emily Bridgers, Scott Pancheck are on the Performa Sleep mattress. And I have nothing but great things to say about it. So head over to PerformaSleep.com and click their big red buy now button. And enjoy. So moving on there, where we're talking about maybe something we might change in the military if we could have stayed in. But, you know, there are some lessons learned about this podcasting format and some things that I've learned and some things that I would probably change looking at it now if I started the podcast today. And I thought it'd be cool to just maybe talk about some things in that regard. So I'll say the first one is, and when we first launched this, Danny, uh, podcast, the podcast websites, people helped us build the website a little bit, but not, not enough website building is hard and I would never do that again. So right. the thing I would change off the beginning is bring Johnny on like now, like yesterday, he, yeah. rather than just us having a cool topic, I would say, let's get someone who can really help us on some backend support. And not that there's not great platforms like the podcast websites group that puts a nice drag and drop menu together and, and some decent support but having somebody who you trust and like and know that can you can go to on a moment's notice and just walk you through the process it's when people know their stuff let them let them stay in their lane and do their thing and i'll tell you right now building websites and seo and and all that stuff is not my lane. So I would not do that again. <laughs> no, not, not just, uh, you, you know, you're right. It's not just that. It's, it's, uh, it's 
a waste of our time to do something we're not very good at. That's right. And do a poor job at it. Uh, and yeah. yeah, and he's <clears throat> so he's talking about Johnny, who is uh, who, who does the uh, produces the show, and uh, it, you know, I mean, he's done a phenomenal job in terms of making things much more uh, professional looking, sounding better. Even though one thing that I wish I could change is Skype sometimes. Some, sometimes we have, you know, somebody that we're, we're chatting with oh. and we have no idea why, you know, some of the audio um, starts to uh, deteriorate a little bit. And some of sometimes it's weather, you know, so it's just like incredibly bad timing with a storm that's happened a couple times um and it, and it could be on their end or our end and things of that nature so you know it's it's kind of uh it's the best option but it's not necessarily it's not perfect so you know that that's the that's the only thing that can be challenging i would say with some of these some of these interviews um but johnny's been great man and and uh, i think it's just a lesson in certain things in life is if you can delegate something to somebody that's better at it than you are and they actually like it they're going to do a heck of a lot better job and it's going to come out uh c- come out a lot better than if you try to struggle with it yourself yeah that's right and and i would agree and, and the skype thing is interesting where there's been some great you know the the charlie weingraff piece the chris duffin piece uh yeah it's been a couple of them that just get kind of get garbled up and there's nothing that I can say, I can point to. So I would ask our audience, anyone who's an experty Skyper or something in that regard, if you know why we have a third party conversation that every now and then the internet just gets wonky, maybe it's bandwidth, I'm not sure. If we can do anything to 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 ensure that that's not the case, maybe even tell our guests that maybe maybe on their preference side what they could do. Just let us know. Shoot that to us. Would be be really helpful. I would say that that's the one thing consistently that. That can be inter- you have you're in this great talk and all of a sudden it's like ah yeah. what's going on with the thing but um you know I don't know how to fix that but um I'm not a I didn't I didn't build the internet and I won't pretend to really say I understand how it functions I just know that um, when I can't get on the Safari or the Google Plus isn't working I'm f- I'm fucking pissed and it's irritating. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> So. That's a, you know, you haven't dropped an f bomb in a while, but that's that's a yeah. that's a well timed one. Yeah, I think so. With a, so. with a just sheer frustration <laughs> with the internet, I like it. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, because you start, and I will say this too: something that I would change is I would probably learn to develop um, some form of an internet hustle or some form of an internet content or a consistent approach sooner. Because if if you if you're if you have a passion, if you have a work, if you have a, something you enjoy, one, through the internet searching, you're going to get better at it learning. But two, you're going to get this big reach if you just start putting it out there eventually consistently. And again, this podcast is a great example of that. Would you say 74 countries, 200,000 downloads? Yeah. I mean, you can really help people if you want to. And I think the internet pushing your business in that direction I think would be really helpful. Remember that was an episode that we had done, you know, start your start your service-based business now and someone did. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which was crazy. They they emailed us so again, I'm still floored by the feedback. So that said, you know, looking forward to helping people and and whatnot. The last thing, Danny, you know, we have some cool projects and um we have some cool things cooking based on the feedback we've gotten from folks. But um what looking forward and looking to what's on the the horizon for the doc and jock podcast what are you looking forward to um moving forward well you know i think being able to put together some more specific things to help people with with uh, you know di- different uh big challenges that a lot of people face so like for instance if uh, if you haven't checked this out yet, um, go to uh, docandjock.com, and on the main, uh, the, the front page, you can sign up to get this seven-day mobility overhaul that Joe and I put together, which which we've gotten some really just fun and cool feedback from. And, and we've had people yep. that are like, man, I just I just put this in my uh, – I'm a CrossFit coach, and I just lump this in you know, with the, the, the programming that we're doing because we don't you – know, we have a hard time – um, figuring out what we want to do. So now we have some structure, you know, to something where, or we've had people that in a week, you know, they're telling us they're moving better and they feel better. And, and, uh, it's, it's awesome. It's great. That's what we want to do is, you know, we want to help people. So if you haven't checked that out yet, head, head to doc and jock.com and, and take a look at it. But our goal is, you know, we have over a year of 
podcasts that we put out, we see what people are interested in. We have people reach out to us on topics quite a bit, and um, there's a lot of common overlapping problems that I I think we can help people solve in a much uh, more detailed way, and that's what we're looking forward to doing. And Joe and I, right now, I mean, we're we're kind of in the middle of working on some stuff in particular for the lower back, and it's uh, it's something that we have had personal issues with, and we know how frustrating that problem can be. Um, it's something that we get a lot of questions about, and when any yep. time that we do a, a interview or a podcast that has something to do with you know back stuff, we get a lot of we get a lot of um, interest in it. So that's something that we're 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 working on right now, and and we hope to help people really solve this you know this fr- frustrating problem and um, provide more more in depth kind of content for for everybody to uh, create a bigger change. No, and, and again, the looking forward to helping folks on a bigger level is is probably the the driving force behind even doing the show. You know, right. in the beginning, in the beginning, the the shtick was kind of, you know, this is about us getting better as coaches. But man, really, as we've gotten a response to what people are interested in, it it really has become the driving force to why we're doing it and helping change people in their situation. But the the seven day. Uh, overhaul is interesting i had a buddy pick it up and he's using it to warm his uh his football team up he's a high school football coach so yeah. he was telling me he's got his guys doing it and that was cool feedback to get from that crossfit coach who kind of put it up on their board as the the warm-up for if you come in early do this because people wander around he, you know people people wasting their time right. on the bike or just getting on the foam roll but now there's something structured so no fired up so uh cool stuff in that regard but yeah the lower back stuff will be awesome um you know, again, I'm always interested in who we're going to be talking to, and we've been in into, into some negotiations with folks to to get them on the show, and um, we're close to getting some really big interviews. I'm to who we have scheduled to talk to, and who we don't even know we're going to talk to yet. I'm I love the interview process, and I'm just so fired up to chat and learn from folks. Like I said, I, I'm a bit of a scatterbrain. And yeah, the same way I serial watch television or or, <laughs> or or serial discuss things and bounce around topics and, and can't really get a hold on, on something, that hour we can talk to somebody and pick their brain is, is unbelievable to me. You know, folks and what I've learned from that process is is just it's it's really changed how I do a lot of things, just talking to people who are successful and like what they do. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I love talking to people and you know, and honestly Without seeing her do this, I look forward to my wife's reaction to our, our show. Yeah. For better or worse. I do too because I never even see her face. But sometimes <laughs> you say things and I think to myself, man, I wish I could see Eliza's face when she hears this. Because <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> even, even Ashley still be like, wow, I can't believe Joe said that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, 10 years in, she still loves me, which is great. And, you know, that's part of it, which is fun. But, yeah, no, like like you said, that the big hug I got when we did the Prego episode, she said thank you. And then, you know, Joe, if you want my friends to listen to this, stop talking about that episode stuff. And then, um, yeah, yeah. you know, even, even now where it's just kind of a grin and bear it. So – um, but that's you know just like our sex life, we we work that out. But um, just grin and grin, bear it. <laughs> grins and bears it. That's exactly right. So, but uh, no man. In general, the Doc and Jock podcast. I can, I can remember when I don't know if you remember this, but we were talking on the phone about finalizing this, and you said something to me along the lines of, like, what the hell are we going to call it? Yeah. And like instantly, I was just like, I don't know, something that rhymes. Doc and Jock, Jock and Doc, and. Uh, and I rolled off the couch and I just started jumping around. I was like, that's, that's a nice hook. That's cool. And it says exactly what that's we're going to do. And then Johnny came along and got us a better logo than, than, than we had before. And we're working through it. So upward and onward guys, this has been really fun for us. It's been really fun, Danny, to spend the last you know hour kind of rehashing what we've done over the last a hundred episodes. And I'm sure yeah. we, we've only really scratched the surface. So, um, you know, whether you're Johnny Owens and blood flow restriction or, um, Man, who was the orthopedic we had on that, yeah, that does the man. cadaver stuff? John Hyman. John Hyman, you know, great, Real smart, smart. people. We, yeah. Doug, Doug Ketchigan's coming on. Yeah. We talked about Pat McNamara. You know, um, I don't even want to talk about some of the other names yet until we confirm them getting on. But, man, there's some cool stuff and the cool products. And, you know, thanks to Mobility Wad, Kelly Starrett, Shoe Cues jumped on, uh, John Maxwell and Perform Asleep. You guys are awesome. 
it's just been so cool to reach out to men that we could go on for another hour, I think, and drop more names and take more thank yous. And we could, you know, and and also, you know, the big thing is, you know, uh, really thanks to everybody that listens. Um, yep. Man, if you if you like what we're doing, you know, share it share it with your friends, like. It's something that's if you think we could help somebody you know, man, shoot it, you know, shoot it to him on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is, and you know, this is just something that, that Joe and I are really we're very fortunate to have uh, been semi successful with this, and, uh, and 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 honestly, it gives Joe and I, you know, and we're we've been friends for a long time, and and uh, the military uh, can be a tough. A tough place to maintain friendships with people because of the amount of moving that you do. And coming, you know, uh, mm. uh, being a kid that grew up in the military, I, uh, you know, I've probably said goodbye to more friends than I've, I know, retained. I'm I, easily actually, uh, and it can be tough, you know, to to actually stay in touch and especially consistently as you get busy. This has, you know, been an opportunity. This a fun opportunity for Joe and I to just. Not just you know learn from other people, but also just stay stay in touch and and uh, and you know keep our families close. So, you know we appreciate you guys listening. Otherwise, you know we wouldn't be doing it. Um, so yeah, thanks would, so much for listening. Be, we wouldn't be hanging out as much. How about that? Right. Yep. The internet bringing folks together. If you use it right, you don't just have to troll people and and and, and tear shit down. You can uh, you can do it right and stick together. So yeah, give sure. up on the Skype. Start a podcast. Hey, we had we had some guys like we said start a business based on our um, recommendation. We've had people fix their backs and train while pregnant based on our recommendation. Well, I want to know if anyone out there is going to start a podcast based on our recommendation. Yeah. I know we've talked to a lot of PTs who are like, I want to do this and people want to be strength coaches. What I would tell you right now is, again, this consistency approach, you know, whatever format it is, whether it's a blog or an Instagram feed or a YouTube channel or a podcast, whatever kind of internet deal you can get and consistently put out a post a week, a post a day, you should start it now, and um, I'd be really interested in knowing anyone who's kind of got off their internet ass and started something. Tag us in it, and I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd like to follow it and just check out the progression because the outside looking in, I just would love to get the perspective of how this podcast has evolved, right? Yeah. And I'd like to get that experience watching something else evolve too. So, hey, if you're if you're someone starting your own thing out, let us know and – um, if we've been helpful in that regard, we'd like to continue to be helpful and, and just to just watch y- your your project blossom. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's all about growth, right? It's all about this. What, what did we say with, with Dan Lair about you talked about an abundance mentality? Yeah. Right. Versus I think scarcity that, mentality. Yeah, I think that that's important. I think that that's something um, that's the kind of first time I've heard that said. And oh, I was there's like, just oh. a lot of people out there. I mean, think yeah. about it. I, you know, we get this all the time, you know, people – uh, I had, I had somebody, you know, I told them we're working on something for, for lower back stuff. Uh, and they're like, well, what about all these other things are out there, you know, for lower back? I said, well, yeah, you're right. But you know how many people have hurt their lower back? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like, right. It's astounding. And, and it's, it's, it's something that, yeah, there's just, you, you can never go wrong with trying to, trying to help people. And, uh, and, and looking at this project, I, you know, I actually, there have been people that have started podcasts that have reached out to me and, you know, asked for help and were inspired by our, our podcast. And, uh, I, I look back at the first kind of interviews or even topics that we've done and it's, it's almost like cringeworthy. We're like, Oh man, we sucked. <laughs> you know, we were bad. And, but you know what? Yeah, we weren't very good. And maybe, shit, maybe we're not still, maybe we're not very good still. I don't know. Uh, not. cause in a year we'll probably look back and be like, dang, we're, we're we're awful, but I, it's it's just something that you know you grow and and you learn and and we we have this stuff recorded that'll be there forever, you know. And, and so I, I I hope. Where that, is it, by the way? That, doesn't that scare you? Like I don't know, it? but it, you know what I know is you know what's what's going to be funny is one day your kids are gonna and my kids are going to listen to this, and I hope that they I hope it kind of embarrasses them. And I, yeah. I, I hope that, but I also hope that they, they listen to it and think, man, our dads are, are kind of smart uh, and some of this stuff. Yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and they did something pretty cool, and, you know, and, and maybe, maybe they'll be listening. Maybe we'll be doing it at that point still. I don't know. But it's, it's been a fun ride, 100 episodes. You know, this is, this is great. At, but uh, we just, you know, thank you guys for listening and, and thanks for uh, supporting uh, the Doc and Jock podcast. Yep. Guys always looking to prove that uh, if you have a body, you're an athlete. 
and and, and uh, we're, we're on that path for the long haul, guys. So thank you so much, and uh, upward and onward to the next 100. So thanks a lot, gang. Thanks. What's up, guys? Doc Danny here with the Doc and Jock Podcast. And when you get a chance, head over to MobilityWide.com. You can get two free months of programming and subscription to MobilityWide Pro by using the code Doc and Jock when you sign up for a yearly subscription. This is a pretty cool service. They've got daily mobility wads that are programmed. They have case studies where they look at specific issues like, hey, maybe why you're having shoulder pain and how to deal with that. They even have webinars in specific areas like the lower back or the ankle. This is a super helpful resource for yourself if you're an athlete or if you're a coach you can't go wrong with this save two months use the code doc and jock no spaces and enjoy the information